This is an honor that I certainly did not expect at all, but I've always resonated with and respected the work of Common Cause. And thank you so much for this recognition. And it is definitely one of the highlights of my life. Recently, recently, my daughter Alicia, and is it Eckling or no? It's Eckling to me. Okay. My daughter Alicia and I took an evening flight from Philly to Ithaca. While over Pennsylvania, we noticed that the once beautiful wilderness area was now dotted and lit up with blinding white lights and eerily disturbing gas flares. There were too many fracking operations to count. New York State will go the way of Pennsylvania unless we take a stand against one of the greatest environmental atrocities of our generation. Three years ago, I first read about the gas industry's plan to extract natural gas from the Marcella ship in a process that we call fracking. I reacted like an Iraqi to shock and awe Hydraulic fracking drills up to 8,000 feet into the bowels of the earth, requires millions of gallons of water, and hundreds of unidentified chemicals, including carcinogens, to extract tiny, teeny little bubbles of methane gas that have formed over millennia. Radioactive materials, brine, heavy metals, um, and uh, uh, brine, heavy metals, and, and uh, that's it, radioactive material, brine, and heavy metals are brought up to the surface. These materials are extremely toxic. As with nuclear materials, there's no way to dispose of the waste. In some cases, as you all have probably read, the wastewater has been marketed and it's sold and it's been spread on our roads. Fracking will ruin New York State's pristine landscapes, agriculture, tourism, wine and health, and wine industry. And incidentally, wine alone um, generates $3.7 billion a year in New York State. As a cancer survivor, I'm concerned about the shockingly rising rates of environmentally caused cancer in our population. Why would we want to expose ourselves to more carcinogenic chemicals? Another love canal. According to biologist Sandra Steingraber, the 1,500-page draft environmental impact statement mentions the word cancer 10 times. Eight years ago, Alicia suggested that our foundation focus our environmental grant making on water. Our grants are now, are now concentrated on preserving the quantity and quality of water used in the Mississippi. Our goal is to establish water as a commons, publicly supported and available to everyone. by water. Most of this is salt water. Only 2.5% is fresh water. Much of this is frozen in the polar ice caps and, and deep and accessible underground aquifers. This means that less than 1% of the world's fresh water is available for the 7 billion people that walk this earth. And how much of this is being polluted as I'm speaking? The oil and gas industry admits that there are significant problems with their wells and wide, a widespread risk of contamination and leakage. And let's remember that water flows. It flows under the ground through cracks and crevices. It flows on the ground in tributaries. It's transported above ground, encased, and as a commodity in plastic bottles. It goes everywhere. Our bodies are 65% water. Water sustains us. Water connects us all. Regionally, Park Help Jumpstart Sustainability Initiative in Tompkins County with the intent of making Ithaca a model for sustainability nationwide. Fragging would erase the hard-won gains of our work. Vegetables irrigated with contaminated water are hardly organic. We believe that the pillars of the 21st century are clean water and air, alternative energy, and economic justice. undermines water and sustainability, we looked for partners to work with in hydrofracking, 
We approach the issue from every angle. We support science, research, corporate influence, policy, legal issues, health effects, economic forecasting, grassroots efforts, media, and investment strategy. This is the first time that we have such a comprehensive approach to an issue in concert with so many strategic partners. Our uphill battle has been consistently countered by the fossil fuel industry who barrage the media 24-7. They must feel threatened, and they should, for truth is a hope equalizer, as we are now seeing in the Occupy and related pro protests worldwide. Like water, money also flows. Our foundation is in the process of moving our portfolio into ESG investments to take into account environmental, social, and governance issues. We We are looking at the triple bottom line and will be replacing our oil and gas stocks with investments in clean, alternative energy. Our true bottom line is the good we do in the world. The management of our capital assets will reflect our values and ideals. However, we're being strategic. We will continue to retain only enough shares in oil and gas stocks to exercise shareholder activism. <laughs> Which we did, we did with the Oz, Oz successful campaign that was uh, run by, as you saw, um, with Exxon in 2009. Tom Van Dyke is helping us with this transition. In contrast, Governor Cuomo is moving in the opposite direction. He seems to think that the problem of fracking can be solved by regulating where the operations are located. For instance, New York City and Syracuse, there's watersheds around you, uh, uh, Syracuse and, 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 and New York City, would be off limit to fracking. But what about the rest of New York State, especially the Finger Lakes, which is the home of 7% of the world's fresh water? How dare we pollute this water for us and our future generations? This is an environmental justice. Given the green light, Governor Cuomo might decide to welcome an army of corporate mercenaries to ravage and plunder significant portions of this magnificent state. All many politicians are beating the drums about jobs, which resonates in a time of economic crisis. But most of the jobs will be filled by temporary out-of-state workers. Moreover, the gas industry will destroy over 56,000 jobs supported by the tourism industry. Financial benefit to local communities will be minimal and will bring severe environment will, will bring severe environmental consequences. And who will clean up our land once it's been devastated? We know how this works. Profitize the profits and socialize the losses. Besides, fragging is a boom and bust proposition. Solar is the fastest growing job sector, se sector and it is safe and long Moreover, we need to consider the impact of fracking along existing coal lines. Emerging data links increased seismic activity to fracking worldwide. The imposition of fracking is symptomatic of what has been plaguing our world, typified by the Citizens United decision that gave giant corporations unfair, undemocratic, and unfettered control of our political system. Our planet and its inhabitants are being sacrificed in increasingly aggressive and rapacious ways, all for the almighty buck. In our world, in our work to oppose hydrofracking, Park simply helped fuel an army of courageous individuals and NGOs. These true champions of the movement are recognized individually in our program. I wish I could have talked about all of these names. A lot of them are here tonight. In addition, there are also the unheralded New Yorkers who have run for local office on a no drilling platform, have written letters to the editor and comment letters to the environmental review process, have called the governor and their elected officials to share their views, and have turned out to protest rallies and community meetings. So many thousands of creative and courageous people are engaged, and this army keeps growing. 
And watching this happen, I find much to celebrate and great hope. In closing, I would like to thank Common Cause for investigating the role of money in politics as it relates to fracking. Your research has eliminated the reach of the gas drilling industry, money in campaigns and lobbying in New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Michigan. This industry has spent $747 million over the last 10 years alone without any government intervention or regulation. This information has helped rally the public against this practice in our state. I would also like to acknowledge Bill Moyers, who is with us tonight. If the main insight, integrity, and courage, our country would be totally transformed. We would have a literate and enlightened populace. Many of us have missed hearing his voice of reason in a time of madness. Fortunately, he will be launching his own show on TV this January, Warriors and Company. are invited into New York State. The only recourse we'll have is to hit the streets and use civil disobedience. <laughs> Nothing short of a total ban can save us from this unholy tragedy. We believe that New York has, come to, has become the first state to ban fracking, taking a leadership role which the rest of the country can then rally behind. There is nothing left in our future of the state. If Cuomo changes his mind and comes out against fracking, yeah. it will be important that he knows that many of the people in this room will have his back. <laughs> Moreover, there is power in this room. I hope that each one of us will play a significant role in assuring that New York State does not go the route of Pennsylvania. I urge all of you to either write or call the governor along with state and local legislators, send in your comments about the draft environmental impact statement to New York Department of Environmental Conservation by December 12th. We don't have much time. That's the deadline. See, back to democracy. That's an easy, back to democracy.org. That's what we all want. Back to democracy.org. It'll tell you how to do it. You submit your comments. I will conclude with a Cree Nation proverb. Only when the last tree has died, and the last river has been poisoned, and the last fish has been caught, will we then realize that we cannot eat money? Thank you on behalf of the Park Foundation to all my friends and allies in this fight. I salute you. No fragging wave. <laughs>